hope you enjoyed the icebergs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feel free to go and, and like glance if you need to. All right. So, let me start off just speaking a little bit about myself. Um, I have always traveled, and I've gotten addicted to that quick travel, just like going from like city to city, overseas, like multiple cities within a week. Um, yeah, you know, stopping at the airport, and that's my uh, first trip to Germany was a six-hour layover in Berlin. That was unexpected. <laughs> so sometimes that's what travel means. But it's also really great to have some time where you get to know a place and know the people. And that's kind of what I'm here is for my first speaking engagement, um, a place where I actually felt like I was part of this community. And I met people, and I don't always know why I met these people, but I believe it's good to have as low expectations for a first meeting, and you never know what you might get from your interactions with somebody new. Which meant that in 2013, I met someone named Heather Wilde. <laughs> and Oops. <laughs> I didn't really know what to expect from her, and I think she didn't really know what to expect from me because I was pretty new to the tech community in Vegas at the time. But what it meant was, six years later, when she was launching her first tech company in Antarctica, she asked me to make sure I was there, and she also asked me to speak. So here I am in Antarctica. Surrounded by glaciers for my first speaking engagement. Woo! 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 Yeah. Um, so I'm here for two reasons. One is to build my community, and the other is to share my knowledge as a leader, because I think that's how we learn to share experiences from each other um, and growing and creating and solving problems that face us every day. <laughs> Here's the name is wrong. Wisdom from a cat. Cats are not exactly known for their warmth, ability to work together, or great leadership skills. So why did I choose cats? Does anyone here own a cat? <laughs> I didn't have a lot of work But they're not entirely wrong. As a leader, for example with this, you can't always follow every opinion or you'll never accomplish anything. You have to make a decision that says, this is right, this is the path we're going to take. I allow myself to trust in my vision and those of my partners. And that, in turn, attracted a team that was capable of handling the projects and managing the clients. That meant I am now running a company that brought in a million revenue in its first year. <laughs> you, of course, are decides free to decide if the following advice works for you. Cats, after all, sometimes have different priorities than humans. <laughs> but please allow me to present the most effective leadership tips I have from cats. Number <laughs> one, push your problems off the table. <laughs> like coffee cups or laptops or sometimes problems. Well, and it can get out of hand. Uh, like the wildfires in California, if you call that. PD&E failed to set up infrastructure. They knew what they were, it was a problem. And now it became a $13.5 billion settlement. It's not a great outcome for any company. But sometimes you do have to push some problem off the table. I learned to push away the little distracting things that kept me back. And sometimes there were bigger problems. My first company was not as successful as this one. We, I'm not say exactly how much, but we did lose quite a bit of money. And I tried to build a video game. Uh, I thought you, I played video games my whole life, and I thought it would be great to create an educational game that was actually engaging and effective. I thought I could like, revolutionize educational games. That launched in 2015, 
and in 2016, I closed the company. It was not the proudest moment in my life, and I felt an incredible amount of guilt um, over the waste of time, the waste of resources, and feeling like I had a little bit of imposter syndrome back then, which has stayed with me now, but you move forward and you don't realize that sometimes things happen. So to me, that was an investment into what I have now. But if I had not been able to let that go, if I had kept myself in my head, I would not have been able to move on to a successful company. Stay aloof and mysterious. People love that boss. You know, you never know like what they're thinking, and it kind of keeps you on your toes. And you know, all sorts of surprises, like maybe anniversary getting laid off. <laughs> But if I think about it, sometimes it's not bad advice. Sometimes it's okay to not let your team or your employees know everything. Your company is not a therapy session. Disappear randomly. <laughs> Do an apartment. <laughs> One of the goals as a leader can be to produce something that is sustainable on its own. You're responsible for fighting and executing the vision but your company should not be codependent on you so that you can never get away or never have to leave unexpectedly or lose internet unexpectedly and everything falls apart. Trying to automate yourself out of the company can actually be a really great goal. You do not want to be the bottleneck to scale your company. Give employee presence that you want. I believe in the platinum rule that says treat others the way they want to be treated versus treat others the way you want to be treated. But if that doesn't quite work out or you don't know, at least give them something that's going to be valuable. Right? Don't just give them junk. Don't give them bonuses or perks that are not going to be useful to them. Give them something that you at least could find valuable. Yes. <laughs> This is one of my favorite things. This is the end of This works out great every time. <laughs> every time people offer new ideas, new people come around, make sure you dismiss every new opportunity out of hand, the finished space, and keep it safe from scary new people or ideas. For example, um, IBM offered a contract to EDS to offer desktop software. EDS turned them down. Someone named Bill Gates came along, sold an operating system, well, so I did an operating system, and consequently became the richest man in the world. So that worked out really well for EDS. <laughs> <laughs> Always keep plenty of food around. I like this one. The way to a man's heart is through his stomach, and it works the same for women. Keep people fed, keep them motivated. I actually love when I go to a company and they have a great, like, you know, espresso bar and snacks and just things that people can take quick little breaks and refresh themselves. Being a leader means bringing the bacon, and sometimes that means real bacon. Yeah. Bacon. <laughs> Choose who you're nice to. You don't have to be nice to everyone. You do have to be respectful and polite and treat people with basic kindness. But once in a while you can decide that someone's not good for your life and you can buy or find. And it's not the end of the world. You need to do what you need to for the well-being of your company, your team, and yourself. I used to be very guilty of this. I wouldn't feel like I could get all selective. I had to accept everything. And I would work just as hard to win over those who were trying to bring me down as I did about those who were trying to build me up. So whatever they tell you, you can't do it all. And it is very hard to do it all when you try to make everyone like you as well. Take regular cat naps. Being a leader is not a nine to five commitment. Sleep when you can. Make sure you get your sleep, make sure you take 
even a nap once in a while. Studies show that taking a 15 to 20 minute nap once a day can actually really increase your productivity. So take a moment, get a snack, take a walk around the block, it's all good for you. Even if you feel like a kitten, be a panther. <laughs> make it till you make it. My friend had this cat. It's a little black cat about this big. He thought he was a panther. <laughs> so he'd sneak up on the bookshelves and pounce. But he wasn't really good at it. So most of the time he'd miss. <laughs> it just seemed like this little like black fuzz just like whizzing by your head. <laughs> and then he'd land and act like he meant to do that all along, right? And kind of stroll off through the uh, door and like, you know what, this is, uh, that was my whole intention. Come by and say hi. So, I appreciated the confidence of the little cat. And I definitely feel like that is one of the great things that you can do when you are especially new to being a leader to help move past imposter syndrome is, it is okay to fake it, and it doesn't mean that you're any less than one. So, thank you for your time. <laughs> <laughs>